Australian Football Video presents Vintage Football from the Seven Sport Classics Collection. Seven's Magic Moments and the Sensational 70s. Football action to get your blood boiling. In Seven's Magic Moments, thrill to 30 minutes of unrivaled football history. From the brilliance of Baldock to the antics of Jacko. And the Sensational 70s. Highlights from one of Aussie Rule's finest decades. Magic Moments and Sensational 70s. Two magnificent Seven Sport Classics from Australian Football Video. From Australian football video comes the most exciting footy decade ever, the electrifying 80s. See the marks and the sparks, the tragic and the magic, the misses and the kisses, the preacher and the creature, the flyers and the messiahs, the sneaks and the cheeks, the cunning stunts and the stunning punts. See the thrills, the spills, the skills and the deals. The electrifying 80s, the perfect gift for that special footy sickness. everyone from the Seven Sports Desk. As the rumblings of the National Football League make their presence felt, it seems an ideal time to reflect upon the season just past. It was the year that saw the 1983 grand finalists, Hawthorne and Essendon, once again continue to dominate the competition. The emergence of giant Paul Salmon as one of the most exciting prospects in years and his subsequent tragic injury. The financial woes of a number of clubs highlighted by St Kilda's perilous fight to actually stay in the Victorian Football League. The battle for fifth position on the Premiership ladder, which wasn't actually finalised until the final siren on round 22. Bernie Quinlan's second win in the John Coleman medal for the VFL goal kicking and the retirement of his longtime friend Gary Dempsey. Let's sit back now and enjoy our annual review of the season past in That Was The Season That Was 1984. The Hawks had waited six months to see their Premiership pennant unfurled and then celebrated with a six goal win over the Swans. A couple of West Australians, Hunter and Ralph, set the pace when Carlton delivered one of the football thrashings of the year to North. The Roos had finished on top of the ladder in 1983, but went down by 137 points at VFL Park in front of a stunned crowd of 36,000. Ralph finished with nine on his senior debut. Into the goal square, seven goals to Warren Ralph. Just kicked seven. There need to be a mammoth kick to score from there, which passed the trainer's bunker, and that's about 50 metres from goal. And then some. Beautiful punt kick. Oh, that's 55 metres. Can he kick a ball? Well, what a kick. It was a great day for the goal kickers. Simon Beasley, the Bulldog stockbroking spearhead, kicked 11 as Footscray destroyed the inaccurate Tigers. Richmond had kicked 1-11 at half-time. <laughs> Tiger, Demon, Saint and part-time Sinner. The incredible Mark Jackson travelling footy show moved to Cadinia Park and the effervescent Jacko celebrated with nine of the best. President, a well -placed At the Rebbin, the, the score was 7 all for the full forwards Salmon and Lockett. But the Bombers came out 37 points ahead on the scoreboard and that's where it counted. the kick travel that far, Lockett behind his teammate. from Hurd, comes towards the half-back line, grabbed by Burns on the left, but he fires, and he's put it through a quick goal. Merritt's kick up the half Had a decent helping of Salmon to the rugged Essendon side of 1983, as well as an even more improved Simon Madden, and the grand final replay against Hawthorne on round two took on a different light. 
The record margin of six months previous was never in jeopardy. In fact, this battle raged all day at Windy Hill and went to the Hawks by a solitary kick. Paul Salmon kicked seven for the second week in a row. Yes, towards Salmon again, but it may be too long. Oh, I think he's grabbed this mark. I think he's going to pay it. What about that from a kick by Knights. That's a long kick. Oh, that's a beautiful kick by Knights. Kick one goal. He should be able to just make the distance from there. Which he will do. The accuracy is a gem as well. Got it. It's all it counts. There's the kick by Langford. That's not a bad sort of a kick either. To go. What a long kick by Langford. He certainly rebound, uh, rebounded well in this quarter. Kick by Brereton from about 55 metres out. It's a long kick. I think it might be a goal. It is a goal. Enough to upset these players considerably. Oh, we saw it. It's a, a break. Oh, oh Knights has knocked over. Right? So he's been given a rev at half time. Knights all oh, got a mile in the air. Couldn't complete the mark. Out he tries to pick it up. His big boot got in the way and the ball is out of. Oh, golly! Beasley Simon Beasley had to wait until the two-minute mark of the second quarter to kick his first against the Cats. At the other end, Mark Jackson was in full command. Beasley was to kick eight of the Bulldogs' nine, but although Jacko could kick only four, he had the satisfaction of playing in a winning side. He said he didn't have pace. Pedo punt kick. Jackson's in the front position this time. The ball comes out towards Terry Bright. Bright goes towards goal and brings up his third. 40-point lead as Jackson takes it, snaps towards goal. Great goal by Jackson. <laughs> Up to Beasley. No 15 metres. Down, Beasley's in position to take the mark and does that. Over the back came Yates. What a good, strong mark. That's a good mark by Simon Beasley. Ford Beasley going back into the pocket. He takes it. This is what they want. Just a couple of quick ones. Short, the bounce may favour Beasley. He's kicked their score. And he continues to. He's looking for Jackson. Jackson punches the ball away, enabling Drum to come through. And no mistake, Jackson again playing a part in that goal. It looked like a simple clash of heads. Anir and the veteran Dempsey. For the 334-game North veteran, the most decorated in league football, the depressed fracture of the cheekbone was to hasten the end of his career. It was also curtains for North. Taylor 6, Roach 3, and Richmond by 14 points. Year 4 of the Barassi five-year plan at Melbourne started disastrously when the Demons lost to the Swans in Sydney by 14 points. For both teams, 1984 was to be a year of mixed highlights. Another one back to Peter out of a little big corner, I'd say it's a goal. By Austin. While Jimmy Buckby was the meat in the sandwich, it was to be the Cats who made a meal of Carlton at Prince's Park in the third round. The Blues went down for the count, losing by 29 points, and left Geelong undefeated on top of the ladder. Jacko, bless his soul, kick six. Scratch a nail, two goals to nail. That could be just about the silver. 18-9, to 13-7-85. Reigns. In a testing encounter between Essendon and Collingwood, there was to be one heavyweight factor in the Bombers' favour. Full forward Paul Salmon marked brilliantly, kicked superbly, and cut the Magpies' defence to pieces with eight match-winning goals. Steadies goes short to Salmon. Long, Andrews jostling for front spot, beautifully marked by Salmon. Holds, who goes high towards full forward. Salmon's got the height. Going towards the pocket, Salmon out in front. He's an extraordinary footballer, Bob. Wide, Salmon on his own. So Salmon folds up towards the square. Salmon again. One hit by Salmon. <laughs> what a wonderful mark. Puts the ball forward. Salmon taps the ball down. Roves to it himself. <laughs> oh, and brings up goal number seven. Oh, dear, dear. The young man can do no wrong. Look at the brilliance of Robert Flower and you appreciate the talents of a champion. But not even the Victorian captain could help the demon steal a thriller against Hawthorne. A kick separated the teams at the siren. Sweet revenge would be Melbourne's later in the year.
towards half four. Pick and the Magpie returned to Victoria Park with different plumage as Pick and the Swan, but his hopes of glory were not to be. The hot homecoming left the Swan with a dislocated shoulder. Cloak. Oh, Pick and gave him one to go on with, and Billy, an Academy Award performance, goes down. Play continues in the meantime. Cloak two on one, loses out. Tony Shaw gets tackled. Uh, well, Pickin and Cloak having a little bit of a dust up. Down there to watch Barry Round, but Evans is there. Couldn't hold the mark. Kicks it off the ground. And that's the For one of the rare occasions in league history, the Swans were to enjoy victory at Victoria Park by just three points, despite the efforts of banana bender Dale Woodhall. And the ball is finally knocked out. It's Carroll going down. A hand pass to Browning. A booming goal by Mark Browning steadied the Swans in the last quarter. And then it was simply a matter of sitting back and lapping up the festivities. They're doing a pretty good job. There's the siren. Nothing seemed to go right for the Tigers against Carlton on Easter Saturday. And 45,000 people at the MCG saw the home side go down by 54 points. Take that free kick. No, well, this time he allows play to go on. It's Hunter and Landy competing for the ball. It comes out to oh. Warren. Ralph, Ralph, the banana kick. There's the result. Shoulder. Fisted down. Johnston throws it beautifully into full forward. He goes. He hooks it back towards Watson. Dreadful Watson's kicking in the first term saw Essendon, Essendon kick three goals from 14 scoring shots against, against Melbourne. But with Salmon kicking four, the Bombers were to go on and win well. Can he kick a goal? He fires to Salmon. Salmon chips in front, plays on, left foot into the open goal, and he puts it... The game's traditional rivals, Carlton and Collingwood, attracted 68,000 people to the park for their Anzac Day clash. And what a game it was. A goal the difference at quarter time, two points at half time, the Magpies by seven points at the last change, and a stormy final quarter. What more could the fans want? Oh, there's a cut and play it down the ball, down there towards the Ford uh, pocket position. Calling for the uh, trainer or somebody to come out there. Now yeah, Pete, he's gone for a pass to Williams. Oh, the market got laid out. He's got a booking. That's gone. To the full forward position. Well, Warren Ralph supplied the drama. His kick after the siren was to cost the Blues victory by five points. Oh, and all the players there. Look at the Collingwood players in the goal square trying to put him off. Can he kick this one to make it a draw? Look at all those Collingwood players. He fires. He's got it, I think. He's missed it. What a goal! goal. Collingwood have won the game by five points. What a finish! What a finish to this great game. The big guys are late. Lethal Lee joined the 300 club and his longtime teammate Michael Tuck made it 250 against Footscray. And together they helped thrash the Bulldogs by 47 points. Yes, or behind. Hanson grabs the ball, but he's grabbed that time by Di Pietro Menigo. Now it's Matthews spinning out of the black, playing his 300th game over Di Pietro Menigo. It's another goal. So they're five goals. After a great start, Melbourne slumped against North Melbourne. The Demons had lost five straight, and only St Kilda was keeping them off the bottom of the ladder. And a snap at goal looks a beauty. Second goal. Gets his kick away, however, and Anthony Fury, the opportunity of going forward for North. Well shepherded behind by Hodgman as he goes short. Now here's the opportunity for Phil Kelly. Long in towards goal, over the top, and he's put it through. If Cunningham's there also. The Cats burst to a 67-point lead at half-time against the Saints, the but then had to withstand a frenzied fight back. They won, but had plenty of bruises to show for it. Towards Barker. That was a beautiful pass by Elkinstone. And a mark by Barker, and it's on here. Harold Cunningham and Reed. Crawley in there, players go down, and one's still in the gutter down there. The umpire's trying to sort, the trainers are in oh, there Oh gee, one of the trainers caught one right across the ear from one of the Geelong players, and fair enough too, he shouldn't even be in there. Kick from 45 it took just 28 seconds for Footscray's Simon Beasley to post the first goal of the match against the Swans. But after that, things balanced out. The Swans managed to lead by 17 points at three-quarter time, but failed to score in the last term, and lost their second game of the season by seven points. Well, what a sensational start. Now for Evans to score, let's go at the goal from a good distance. That's not a bad sort of a kick either, it's a goal! Bounce back in. Oh, bounce back, I thought it went over the line. Let's see how it's Round. a goal. Barry Round might have kicked. Oh, beautiful mark that time, a ripper. But he's playing that side, so that was a man. Yeah, really he kept his eyes on the ball. That, that's, oh, I 
would not. That's a bad decision by the umpire. Well, up towards only a point four, separated and Essendon right. and Fitzroy at half time in their sixth round encounter. But the match turned into a non event the after the break. The Bombers kicked 14 goals down. to five Cutting and won by 51 points. Back to Watson. Danger now for Fitzroy as the Bombers go streaming forward. Three bounces to Watson. Goes short beautifully to Ezard, who can steady. Shoot towards goal, and there's football. That's what it's all about. The Bluebirds fluttered back into football at Prince's Park, and so too did a man named Robbie Muir. When the dust settled, Muir found himself reported seven times and was to subsequently be suspended for 12 weeks. The Blues, by the way, won the footy match by 14 points. Collingwood moved back into the five with a 21-point win over North with goals like these. Should have done the ship. Big burly Brian Taylor of Richmond decided enough was enough when he met Hawthorne head-on at the park. He booted six goals in a 15-minute burst in the third quarter, and his teammates responded to his outstanding solo performance. It was the Tigers by 39 points, and the Hawks had lost their first match since the 20th round of 83. Again, Brian Taylor. A little bit further in front of the goal, unless he kicks it real hard, keeps it on line. He pops it up, and he pops it through. Goes toward Taylor. O'Halloran out in front. Taylor pushes him in the back. The umpire calls by on. Taylor goes into goal, and he's got another one. Brian Taylor. Thorn again. Round seven was memorable for the fightbacks by Carlton, who trailed Melbourne by 41 points at half time, and with an eight goal burst in the last quarter, won by 17. Pretty well a snap at goal, not a bad throw. Position from Mick off the hands. Murphy caught Meldrum for goal number four. Can't miss and goals. And Giles leading out. Ralph knocks it back. Murphy, a goal would put Carlton in front. And he's done it. The Blues are in front. Oh, had to happen. Two we see little Murphy goes for a long hand pass. This looks dangerous. Over to Ralph from the Austin. Another goal. Goal number seven. That'll be it. That'll be it, that'll be the end of the demons, I would say, for the day. What a comeback to Carlton. The Magpies didn't need to fight back, but won by 45 points goal. against Geelong Miles with play like this. Miles, the goal umpire says it's another one to the, uh, the Magpies. Hand pass to Abernathy. Abernathy on to Neville Shaw. Back towards Abernathy. A chance of a score as Abernathy goes towards goal. It's a beautiful looking kick, and Collingwood have got the game sewn up. And Greg Phillips dons the goal umpire's there. The Saints trailed north at half-time, but with Tony Lockett kicking seven in another outstanding performance, went on and won their first game of the year. The Hawks trailed by close to five goals against Fitzroy, but kicked six-eight in the last quarter to snatch the points. from behind down it comes to Matthews over it goes to Judge Judge runs into the open goal steps at the ball Matthews tries to get around Hinchin his hand pass goes to Byrne Byrne shoots it over to Wallace Wallace goes goal and is it through it bounces right for the Matthews the hero for the Hawks was the irrepressible through. Lethal Lee Matthews left. who helped Lee himself to seven of the best and he's put it through for goal number seven for the Swans in Sydney on the Sunday Brian Taylor and his Swan opponent Rod Carter seemed more intent on wrestling and grappling than football. Taylor went out on the day, booting six, and the Tigers fell in by seven points. We see Taylor and the Carter having a few words. Well, Shepherd at two. Oh, 
headlock by Taylor on Carter, and Carter goes after him. It's on. Oh, oh So is the play. It's pretty, it, well, watch the play, you watch the fight, Luke. The air. For the first time, interstate football was played under lights, and 52,000 people turned up at Adelaide's football park to see one of the great clashes in recent years. 15,000 people couldn't gain admission, but those who did saw Stephen Kernahan kick 10 goals and Victoria win by four points. Off the ground, it's a goal! Kernahan kicked it! He gets smashed going the wrong way, Victoria going again. Oh, not a good kick forward, it's going to roll through though! The umpires have a chat to each other. It's a goal, Phillips not happy. Oh, it's kick not good. Gee, I've never seen him kick that poorly. Off the ground again, Kernahan. Oh, well, if you can't mark him, he'll kick them off the ground. Five in the line. Dacos wants to play on. Kick number 10 for the champion Collingwood player. Lines them up. Does not miss. Two goals, Dacos. Fisher, Wilson. Could be a mistake. Big Moore looking for Salmon. Hooks round the corner. The big fella's getting back. Could bounce through goal. South Australian era. Heads towards the golf course end. Going for his 10th goal. Ball coming back with boot goal. A few kicks in this first quarter. The crowds turned up at the MCG. 70,000 in fact to see Richmond and Collingwood produce another of those thrillers that they are renowned for. Brilliant Tiger centre man Morris Rioli was at his best. And the home side crept home by 14 points. I'll wait and see. He's lost his hat. Umpire Morrow conferring. Of the league. players getting into the act as well. well. He's got no hope of giving a decision. If he can't give a decision, he can. It's one behind. Well, how the heck did he see that? Well, I don't know. He's doing too much. He's lost it. And Rioli's decided to play on a hand pass to Jimmy Jessel. This is danger for Collingwood as he has a long shot for goal. It's pretty good. It's a goal. Yes, a great shot. With the mark. Rioli, oh, threads his way through beautifully. On to Whiteman, can he score this time? 25 metres out, the flea. And a goal, the second. Scouting unable to take it. John Kennedy displayed his versatility for the Hawks against Carlton. The one-time defender come forward, kicked five goals in Hawthorne's first quarter burst of 10-3, and the day's blues never recovered. Bad play, the judge is there. He's got to stand his ground. Picked up by Fleming Kennedy again, and he's kicked three. Shoots in towards full forward, danger again for Carlton. And here is the man of the moment. John Kennedy has kicked three goals. He has the opportunity of making it four and giving the Hawks a five goal break. Oh, and it's a beautiful kick off the ball. Brewerton doesn't even attempt to fly, leaves it for Langford. Here's another one. How easy is this, says John Kennedy. Five goals in 23 minutes. Swans. Despite yeah, kicking 12 goals to six in the second half against the Swans, the woes of Barry Cable's ruse continued into round eight. This loss to the Sydney Siders left them 11th with two wins for the season. Trevor Barker's long-awaited return to the Saints lineup was short-lived, but at least he was part of a winning team against Footscray. Geelong's erratic start to the season was highlighted at VFL Park when they stayed in contention for a half, then faded badly to lose by 43 points. But Danaher, uh, Van der Haar backs himself and kicks very long into the square. It may have been touched. It may have been touched. The umpire said no. Very slippery over there. A fractured cheekbone for Rod Ashman was only one of the bone-shattering results of the Bombers' blitz on Carlton on round nine at the end of May. The Blues trailed by a point at half-time, but added only 1-5 for the second half. Beautifully, he's grabbed too high, got one right of the gin that time. Combination, but that's a bad kick. Oh, he's up end of the wood. That's well, a... there's not much that McClure could have done there, just the same. Oh, I don't know. The two Maddens. The two Maddens are having a go. It's only brotherly love. <laughs> he's going to give the free kick to Simon. It just goes to show the older brother got the better of it. Madden goes through like a steam train out to Watson. Watson to Elshaw. Kick number 19, can he go with it? A long shot by the former demon is through for four points. Through Meehan. Well, was it or wasn't it? Max Crow was convinced. For the Saints, it didn't really matter. They weren't in the hut. The Tigers had their share of good luck and bad luck and went on and won by 64 points. Is the body, how is he to recover? He shoots, but it's touched off the boot and one by Put his boot in there and BT settle down. He refuses to. So they all have a little bit of an introduction. Crow and Lee. Lee wins the thump. 
puts it wide. Cowie completely lost it. Picked up by Jess. Jess puts a long goal in. It's football. It's a lovely goal, Jimmy Jess. Melbourne had started the rumblings with a win over Fitzroy and the good form continued against Footscray. Templeton kicked eight, Thorn seven. John Kennedy continued to dominate up forward, seven against North and the Hawks by 57 points. Came on during the third it was Collingwood for sure, in the form of Derek and Gary and Neville and lurking around somewhere was Tony. The drama that unfolded at the Western Oval was to have a chilling climax for John Cale's magpies. It's a goal! What a goal! Tries to get it out. It's a hand pass towards McKenna. Now McLean. McLean snaps towards goal. Got it! The goal! One point the margin! Collingwood looked to be in a winning situation, but one mistake, and that's all it took, cost the magpies dearly. Collingwood may have thrown this one away as Beasley now from directly in front puts the goals in front four goals to Simon Beasley Footscray 15-10 100 as Malthouse and Alex Gardner embrace the Melbourne well, resurgence continued gathering pass. momentum with a win over Co-Tenants Richmond at the MCG the Demons with three wins in a row were dreaming of their first finals appearance since that grand old flag of 64 Peter Moore's first goal. Well, Walsh goes for a pass, looks off, Pickering got the heavy one from Smith, he's down. But that was an accident, finally picked up by Zan Tuckergaard. He hasn't moved, young Pickering. To the left foot, he kicks it high. 23 Jack kicks, 13 foot, marks, foot, and the best of field Vander. votes were just reward for Essendon's Paul van der Haar against North. The ruse had hit the front in time on, but couldn't Vander withstand the bombers in the dying moments. He's going to kick long, going to be a torpedo putt, and what a torpedo putt kick that is! Oh, it's through! That's a goal! Won't score. Vanderhaar! Vanderhaar's mark. Good mark over the back by Paul Vanderhaar. But that kick's being held up by the Breeze. McCann under it. Vanderhaar judged it to perfection. Vanderhaar. And driving up toward the wing position. Oh. And a great mark. Vanderhaar's mark very well this afternoon. Taking a couple of streamers. The, ground the, mark here. the Swans had moments in Sydney against Carlton when things did look good and even their most ardent supporters felt victory was just around the corner. It wasn't to be. The Blues by 52 points. The Swans still hanging on in sixth place. That's Herring and Pickham. It's a happy Bob Hawke and Jones. Hunter is at the back of the pack. Crews there with him. Hunter could score. Snaps it through. Goal. It was a photo finish at the MCG when Richmond and Geelong met on the Queen's birthday split run. The Tigers had hit the front late in the final quarter when a young man named Ablett produced his magic. The one-time Hawk kicked two boomers to propel the Cats to a 12-point win. It's a goal! In towards full forward, Flanagan is there, Jackson at the back, so too Ablett, he's kicked one, he's kicked another one! Gary Ablett's going to win this game for the Cats! Kick by Brian Wood had his worries when the Swans and Bombers clashed, but with a seven-goal bag to Paul Salmon, Essendon ran out easy victors. I think he's uh, pretty badly hurt down there. He's caught his knee, I think. So doesn't look too good. Let's take a look at that again. The, the... Yes, he's not the best, and they're calling the umpire's trainer over. It was a bit of bad luck, actually. Uh, Wood couldn't stop too long. Salmon was now the top goal kicker and a media celebrity with 58 goals in 11 games. Essendon was in top spot with a 9-2 record. Tipped it off, magnificent flight. Puts it up high for Big Salmon, he's there, and marks. Six marks to Salmon. Looking for Salmon again. Oh, we have to get that. So they're only going to lob it up at the end of this big fella, and they've got no hope. Well, he's going for goal number seven, from about uh, 20 metres out on a bit of an angle. Set themselves Those hellish healings, Gerard and Greg played havoc with the Saints, Healy. and the Demons registered win goal. number four on end. No, he got it. No pun kick. Tapped down to Keel in front of the pack. Chance for Healy. Picks up now. Swings it back on the left foot. He shoots toward goal. He's got another one. Long hand pass comes out, and it's taken by uh, Healy. 
This is Gerard Healy going gold after the hand pass by Thorne, and he's put it through for a goal to Melbourne. Kelvin Moore's dreams of becoming the third hawk after Scott and Matthews to play 300 games took a jolt when he and young teammate Russell Morris collided on a wet day in June. And Salmon is killing them. Great mark. Well, centre half back. Oh, oh, Waterson got one from his teammate Timmy Watson then. The grand final replay was yet another Hughes. rugged Hughes. encounter, Hughes. but the Hawks the kept their record intact, down. winning by 47 oh. points. Oh, Brereton collided with Matthews. He lined somebody up and missed him. 77. The Demons wizard Robbie Flower was in full flight against the Swans. Melbourne by 97 points and win number five was on the board. Demons down towards the half forward line. Shocking hand pass from Torbett. Once again, Melbourne taking full advantage of some poor play by the Swans. Flower to Healy. Back to Flower again. Flower hooks the ball. If, however, a high kick. Straight over the top, gathers little distance. Bernie Evans says thank you very much for the bad bounce, and Robbie Flower appreciates it. Hold on the board, Smith brings it back into play. Flower, the genius, goes to Moore. Is up behind the play. Melbourne finally won Thanks match of the day status for the big clash with Hawthorne, and how Ron Barassi revved his boys up. Stephen Smith and Lethal Lee had their moments, but so too did the Demons. It was their sixth win on end, their first win against Hawthorne since April 1972, and the end of a 22-match losing streak, one of the worst in modern football. It was a win that propelled Melbourne into fourth spot. Oh, couldn't take it, but he's got the man waiting down in Richards. Goal! How's that for a quick reply? Well, there is sartorial splendour in the form of Ronald Dale Barassi with the matching bow tie and pocket handkerchief. Pass down to Dixon. Dixon will take the mark and go on and put it through for a goal. Good play, Melbourne. Poor defence, Hawthorne. What a blue. Have Rod Ashman came back after here. his facial injury oh, and did so in match-winning style against Geelong. He had 30 kicks, 6 marks, 7 hand passes and kicked a couple of goals. The Blues, naturally enough, won by 37 points. He's been flattened completely. He's absolutely unconscious, I think. And again, Jeffrey goes to spoil a chance for Ashman in the goal square. It's a goal! Flanagan, there's uh, Glass got a kick straight up in the air. Ashman again. The ball behind. He can't pick up clearly. Ashman again oh. picks up. He's got his own football. Hurry kick to Ashman. Here he is again, Ashman. Over to Johnston. Hand pass by Drum. Meldrum. Beautifully done, Paul Meldrum. A lovely hand pass to Ashman. Will he get the bounce? Now he does. Easy as you like, and he puts it through for a goal. But that's a goal. You can mark that one down to Meldrum because it was his great play. The punched away Would the salmon run come goal, to an end? It didn't look that way in the 13th round sure. against Collingwood. He took goal, his tally to 63 Morris. before but tragedy struck. Shoots, goes! He's got it, I think. Yes, he has. Williams goes for a pass up towards Salmon. He's got the height and marks. Paul Salmon going for goal number three. To make the difference, 14 points. He's only 35 metres out from goal. After one in the goal, I'm five for that. Two, we're going to have a thrilling last quarter. After a freakish collision with Jeff Raines, the big youngster was carried from the ground, destined for the operating theatre, and at least 12 months on the sidelines. Sam and Daly hasn't moved from him for a while, but he's really stunned down there. That is, uh, well, very bad luck for Essendon. Torpedo punt. In just a matter of minutes, three in fact, Lethal Lee demolished St Kilda. He kicked three of his five goals and set up a Hawthorne victory by 104 points. By Matthews to leave it, which he does, and Matthews takes the mark. how do you beat him? How do you beat him? The little chant hand pass. Oh, beautifully done by Robertson. Here he is again, Lethal Lee, onto the left foot. He fires at the goals, and there's no doubt about Lee Matthews. You can't hold him down. It's on. Melbourne's finals aspirations crashed around them as they were literally ground into VFL Park by the Bombers. After six wins in a row, Melbourne slipped back to square one. Got right across the face, he'll get a free kick. Goes for the pass, and that's okay. Danaher got one for his corner today. Oh, Williams, did he go in hard that time? Not a gut, but Wood downed him. Moore and Merritt for the knockout. Knocked out by Moore, picked up that time by Williams. He slewed that one off the side of his boot. I think it might have bounced in some Bailey. On to Templeton. Is that his first goal for the day? I don't think so. Elshaw is there. Oh, went for the slipper. Kicked the Melbourne player right in the hand. And Yates will take the free kick. Pull back, kicked off. The... Oh, there we see Vanderhaar. Copped a beauty in the face. Oh, Greg <laughs> Healy copped a ripper from Donnell. 
There's Van der Haar again. He's dropped that one, but he goes down. Oh, there we see uh, another charge. Conley getting into a bit of trouble as he downs uh, I think he called Van der Haar. A square off, wouldn't you, Lou? There they are all bouncing in now. You just try and sort that one out yourself. Boy. We'll bring you up today if Melbourne looked ragged on the, on the field, oh, the clash between Coach Barassi and outspoken player Zantuck at three-quarter time highlighted Zantuck the feelings and emotions of a beaten side. The pushing Zantuck away from him. Bar oh, Barassi's white down there in the, in the face, but they had a real go, and I'm, I'm not kidding. The players had to push uh, Zantuck away. He's wanting to go back and have a go on him again. Hmm, very interesting. Zantuck very upset about it. No mark Alex Marcou took it on the cheek when Carlton played some of their best football of the year to thrash Richmond by 115 points. Senior Richmond players described the game as the club's worst performance since the early 60s. Collider with Buckley, and it wouldn't worry Jim because although he's got a face full of mud, the full forward Lee. For Carlton, Little Fraser Murphy with five goals produced the type of football that had made him a star with VFA club Geelong West. He took it Murphy away, Andy. And he's down as Ashman shoots towards goal. Fraser, yes! Oh. What is he, four foot eight? Something doing as they like as Blackwell's kick finds Matt and Murphy, who straight away races his full 15 metres and puts it through the centre. Collingwood made up for its loss to the Sydney Swans earlier in the year with a 31-point win in Sydney. Jim McAllister kicked seven. The big news was the sacking of Barry Round after 14 games and the news that Ricky Quaid was in hospital and unlikely to coach again. Forward again. The Hawks were back on top of the ladder after 15 rounds, but still on level pegging with Essendon. Footscray had no answer to the skill, power and relentless drive of the 83 Premiers when they met at Princess Park. Does Michael. Zach Hawkins, a fine mark, but a wonderful game last week. Edmund now snaps towards goal. It's all Footscray and they leave it. Allowing the kick from Edmund to go through. A lovely goal from the Footscray skipper. Still down towards centre wing. Garona Wagon playing for the oh. line. Taken out is new. And what a solid bump that was. Jones and One time Melbourne oh. Ruckman Glenn McLean won his clearance to Collingwood and was right in the thick of things against the Blues. 48,000 people at the park saw Carlton win by 27 points. He nearly messed that up that time, Williams. Not even a solo run by Jimmy Cracker could help the ruse against Melbourne. For the first time since 1976, Melbourne triumphed and moved back into fourth spot. Geelong had hopes of making the finals, but were certainly put to the test in trying conditions at Cadinia Park against St Kilda. Jacko and Faschini kicked five apiece, and the Cats hung on by 13 points. One of the most exciting players on the VFL scene in 1984 was Swans high flyer Warwick Kappa. He kicked five against the Lions and helped the Swans to win number seven for the season. Kappa's shot may have just missed. No, it got in. So that was a good goal. Area. Kappa will be up high. Second grab. Yes, Kappa's mark. Oh, that's good marking by Kappa. In the first quarter. Over it comes to Carroll. He'll nearly make the distance here. He's a great kick. Down it goes, and as I said, I think he has. The goal. Yes. Hoops around, looking for Kappa, and Kappa takes the mark in the square. Bought 15 the ground. metres as well. Oh, the, the player oh. on the mark will have to stand right on the goal line now, because <laughs> Kappa... Kappa had a pat on the head, as if to say, bad luck, mate. Can't pass. Coming Richmond over suffered McCarthy, its fifth successive defeat, defeat, and the club's hopes of a premiership in its centenary year lay in tatters. Easily, uh, Hawthorne won by 88 points McCall and had match long. winners in Peter Curran and John Kennedy, who each kicked six and the brilliant Russell Green, who was already being mooted as a Brownlow hopeful. Here comes McCarthy again, gives it across to Curran, he booted four, make that five as he continues on his merry way, and so too to the Hawks. At the moment, they will almost double that, here's another one, thank you says John Kennedy, and how easy is that? Five goals to Kennedy. They're on the back of well, the sports celebrated, the and so too did the Essendon cheer squad. Essendon continued the two-horse race with Hawthorne as the second half of the season unfolded. On the first half of the 16th round, the Bombers appeared to have ended Fitzroy's finals hopes.
Well, what can stop the bombers? Can't for Williams, out to uh, Watson, Watson out to Neagle. Neagle from the forward pocket, a difficult shot at goal. It's going well, it's going close, it's going through! What a good goal! Essendon support has given him a bit of a raspberry. Kicked up toward Laurie on the wing position, but Laurie can't pick up in front of Baker. And we'll see a boundary throw in around Kennedy. Footscray's Steve McPherson was reported during the match in Sydney and was later to be fined $1,000 by the VFL for conduct prejudicial to the league. And the trainer's getting into that. And the goal umpire's out there. And Smith decides to go on with it. He and Rod McPherson having a bit of a dust-up. Well, they've sorted things out now. I don't think there's any reports. Oh, there's the uh, runner knocked down by one of the players. Well, he got the touch of the stag, because I don't know what happened there. As he's going across to uh, report McPherson. North Melbourne Shaw, remained at the bottom of the ladder, and Garrett, with the retirements of David Shaw, Dench, Gary Dempsey and Arnold Breitas, had embarked on a youth policy. It was to be lost number 14 in 16 to the Ruse against Collingwood. Be dangerous again, he fires at the goals. And there it is, another one on the way. That's uh, five goals to Gary Shaw, my mate by streaking away. By sharp in St Kilda the registered its first win against Carlton since 1978 and did it in style at Moorabbin on the second half of the split round. For coach Tony Jewell, it was to be one of the few pleasant reminders of the season. Nine points to the Saints. Here's Michael Roberts on the left foot. He fires! He's kicked it, I think. Great desperation. There's side bottom is doing a tremendous job. Picks it up out of the ruck. Still got it! looking for Lockett who's been well held by Duel. This time it's Tony Lockett, swings it around on the left foot, it's bouncing towards goal, it's three! Great goal of Tony Lockett! Some of the Jackson Addicts. Jacko was up to his there old is. tricks, Mark but he kept Jackson. kicking goals. A couple against Melbourne, and the Cats' 22-point win gave them fifth down, spot and a game's down, break down, over down, Melbourne. By Brunch, mothered by him. Long down towards Jackson, Jackson using his strength, oh! and a one-hander! Well, wow, what a mark! And he's going to put it through for a goal! Well, great third, Jacko plays up to the crowd at Cardinia of Park. Being told to quiet down by Terry Bright. Geelong 13 to 80, Melbourne 6 11 47 on entertaining Simmons Big League. And it is entertaining. Well, what would you do in that position, Jack? Would you put your fist in his face or what? Well, you can't, you get reported. Oh, Jack O's in full flight. The Crown Prince. Sits straight down the ground. Wilson's in the front position, Templeton coming, Bailey I think it might be, who's come across the front of the back, no it is Templeton. Call play on by the umpire, for what reason I do not know, Templeton oh, surely dear, took the mark. Just see that, well he certainly was upset then, I... Still going, puts a long hand pass down, Flower coming through, takes it beautifully, snaps towards goal, Robert Flower, great goal by Flower, and Melbourne running hot. Point lead in favour of Geelong, Ablett overruns the ball, Turner kicks it off the ground, Goes after it again. Michael Turner first on the scene. Breaks the tackle. Can he line up? Straightens up. Runs past. A goal coming up as Turner puts it through for a magnificent goal by a great captain's effort. What a great piece of football. I've said it all day. We've watched a great game of football and some of the personal achievements here are delight to watch. That was one of them. The day the rains came saw scoring slump. Collingwood kicked only six goals from 25 scoring shots, yet easily defeated Geelong by 26 points. The Cats kicked 4-5. Very Creek soil. Dacos, oh, got one too high for mine. Stunned him a bit too, Pete. A wild hand pass intended for his skipper Turner. He gets ridden into the ground. The umpire says too high. It will be a Geelong free kick. Free kick to Turner. Now this sort of game, uh, when we've got... Uh, so, oh, they're having a go. Tampa's become terribly afraid. There's a punch on there. Banks throwing uh, over his head. Muse. That half forward line. Turner's kick is smothered and it's out of bounds again. Well, they need the players now is someone to turn the hot water off when they finish at the game. Dacos is down, Lou. Dacos is limping badly. Looks as though it could be his ankle. Half forward position. In goes Peak. Not very scientific, that. Gary Shaw. And going off the ground is Turner. Mongaki. Oh, missed it. Could be dangerous. Dacos is there. And he's put it through for a goal. He's hurt his leg too, Pete, after kicking that goal. 
Well, Dacos, as I said, was limping, but he came on and has kicked the winning goal for Collingwood. Neither Essendon nor Footscray had goal by half-time at the Western Oval, and their low-scoring thriller was a highlight of a very damp run. The Bombers hit the front, but then, after Bradbury sealed the game, 34 played 32, and it was a two-point win to Essendon. Bradbury put Essendon back in front. Been a good player all day. Peter Bradbury is a greatly improved player. Footscray lead at this stage by three points. Now it's Essendon by three points. Bradbury puts it through. We saw some highlights of Victoria's exciting four-point win over South Australia. Our second in the state clash for the year was to be at Subiaco Oval. Over 42,500 fans, most of them excited West Australians, went there to see Western Australia take on the Big V. Again, the result, less than a kick. Some highlights now from the first quarter. West Australia's Robert Wiley. It's high, it's long. Has it been touched? From Ayers, Green Now Healy, Jared Healy for Victoria at the back of the pack. Johnson a chance. Now it's Healy. Got his foot to the ball. Shot from 50 side bottom was a key up forward for Western Australia. A chance for side bottom. Well done by Robert Wiley. Into the second quarter, the goal of the day from Malaxos. A minor upset at half time. <laughs> but it was soon back to the game of football, a classic second half. Here's Gary Ablett in fine form. He's a great player, this fellow. That's his sick. The final quarter was one of the best you'd ever hope to see. Wiley across to side bottom. The lead continuing to seesaw throughout the last quarter. Madden got it to Ablett for yet another. Now Madden and Williams is almost ripped through the goals. But the West Australian steady. Rioli to Wiley. We've seen them both. And wrapping it up, Wiley again. A beautiful tap on the side bottom. For the first three quarters, the match of the 18th round between Carlton and Hawthorne was a tight engrossing affair. The Hawks started with seven goals in the first quarter, and in the second and third quarters, tried desperately to stem the Carlton fight back. Snaps towards goal! It's a lovely goal from Colin Robinson! Curran, the opportunity. The Blues led by two points and increased that after three-quarter time, but then Peter Curran struck. He kicked five straight in a last quarter effort that saw Hawthorne kick 10-3, and it was the Hawks by 32 points. A couple of old teammates, David Cloak and Mark Lee, clashed when Magpies met Tigers. Lee had his moment. Cloak's mob won the game by 36 points. In the centre of the ground, they're getting all tempers, getting frayed there. Wally Lovett's there, ex-teammate. He's, he's got Mark Williams by the neck on the ground there. Once again, a chance for Woodall. Snaps it back overhead. Look at that for a goal. Banks in the half forward zone. Now that was kick came from the boot of Turner. The goals are open. The kick on line. Will it run through? Will it run through? Will it run? It's run right through for another Collingwood goal for mine. Footscray had some hope of making the finals, lying in sixth spot, but a win against St Kilda was imperative. It was to be a hard fought win, and after 18 games, the Bulldogs had a nine win, nine loss record with four to go. The Bombers just ambled along casually. Top spot was theirs, and Geelong a mere formality. This looks dangerous, a long shot at goal, and it could be through, it is! That's his second! I've got Cole raising for it, so too has Jackson. Jackson steady, shoots at goal, he's going for his third, it's close, I think he's put it through, Jacko! That was a great he goal. He goes for a pass, trying to find... North had beaten St Kilda by two points, and in Sydney the following week, outpointed the heavily favoured Swans by 15 points. The youth policy was paying off. At the back is Wayne Carroll, who's the rover, beautifully done, Carroll, right step shot, he's got it, has he? It's a goal, two points in it. Cruz, back it goes now to Hodgman, fires at the goals. And the result is a goal. So there are eight points in front. The umpires had their notebooks out before the bounce when Carlton played host to the Angry Bombers at Princes Park in round 19. Four players were reported after these ugly scenes, but again, the Bombers proved to be invincible. The fights are still going on. What a sensational start here at Princess Park. And players coming from everywhere. It's an all in Donnybrook. Oh, goodness me. 
There are fights everywhere. Behind play. It's uh, Bradbury this time getting into it. And Hunter. Oh, golly, is this going to be a wrestling match or a football match? Got a very heavily uh, or badly bleeding nose there. Just can't get that one. McClure gets ridden into the ground by Bradbury holding the ball or whatever. No, Hunter. Kicks just about there. A goal. Only drives it back there. Oh, he's a free kick against McConville. It'll be to Harvey. And it the full forward position. In front is Madden. He's got the mark. He's grabbed it. That's the way to play the game. Waiting uh, for Madden to have this shot on a bit of an angle. Kick on its way. A left footer. And it's a goal. So Eston hit the forward. Oh, 55 metre towering punt kick to Madden. And he hits the post. That's a mark. A mark. It's play on. He shoots. He's got it, I think, for mine. It's a goal. And the Bombers going right on with the job. Slip and slide all over the, the Lions place, started their late run at the five and built up momentum. Collingwood had no answer, and the Lions moved into eighth spot. The one for a into attack. There's the opportunity for the Roys again as Osborne and Gotch combine. Osborne's kick is long. It bounces over the top. Hoists it in towards full forward. The waiting down is Wilson. Great goal. They're the ones he loves off the pack. North provided the shock of the round and one of the upsets of the year when they beat longtime rivals and reigning premiers Hawthorne by a whopping 71 points at Arden Street. It was North's fifth win for the year and left them in 11th spot. Graham Jelly took over as coach of St Kilda after Tony Jewell resigned and then in real football fashion was sacked the next day. Jelly led his men to a seven point win over Richmond. The High Flyers enjoyed themselves at Cadinia Park when the Cats and the Swans met. Capo with six, and the ever-improving Gary Ablett took the honours. Gary Ablett took things into his own hands when the Cats played Fitzroy in the 20th round. It was a game that Geelong had to win to assure themselves a finals berth. Jacko kicked six, Ablett four, but that wasn't enough to stop the steamrolling Lions as they cruised towards an impossible dream and a spot in the five. Hooks it wide, Gary Pert waiting there. Nice mark to Gary Pert. He's playing well at this goal line at the moment. And around Boss Hill goes, swing towards goal with a moving and a great kick. What's he got to kick to? Pert waits for the ball to come to him. It does now. Swings round onto the right foot. Goes goalwards with a mighty kick. Quinlan is there. It goes over the top for a goal. Short looking for Quinlan. Quinlan gets a favourable bounce. Swings away. Onto the left foot. Hooks it over the shoulder. Great play. Oh, beautiful goal. Chances his arm on the half volley is unsuccessful. Ablett threw the ball out in front of him. Regained it. A la Mick Conlon. Fires in towards goal. Great kick. Great kick! Oh, what a goal by Gary Ablett! Well, the Magpies by hadn't been consistent all year, and it lacked that factor from star half-forward Peter Dagos. His brilliance was evident when they beat Melbourne by 32 points. And he'd be happy about that one. Yours at Yates, over to Rodney Wright. Oh, intercepting beautifully as Mullane. He can score. Well done, son. Beautiful passage of play, and he's put it through for a goal. Well, that deserved a goal. Magnificent uh, Edmund underneath it. As Geelong blew their chances against Fitzroy, so too did Footscray against Richmond. It was a loss that was to prove very costly to the Dogs. Jimmy Edmonds playing for Footscray. Footscray have to make sure they get the ball down, try and let the breeze do the work for them. A chance now for Rioli. Can he pick it up? Can he shoot toward goal? He goes goal! It won't make the distance. But while the contenders were shaping up, the champs looked good. Very good indeed. The Hawks slaughtered the Sydney Swans to the tune of 89 points, and Lee Matthews, who'd been written off in some quarters, responded with six goals. Short pass, and uh, Di Pietro Manigo's taken the mark. A quick hand pass over to Judge. A long shot at goal. Not a bad sort of a kick either. It's a goal. The fight for fifth position had overshadowed the battle going on between Collingwood and Carlton for third position and the double chance. Round 21 was to leave the situation unsettled. Footscray kept their chances alive by defeating the Blues at the Western Oval. The margin? A comfortable 35 points. From Blackwell he does, from Reed he does. He fires the ball, goal, comes it through. Great goal! Mark, 
The Magpies failed to grasp their chance, but the real loser was Hawthorne's John Kennedy, who broke his leg in the opening minutes of the game and was destined to miss the rest of the season. The Hawks, with Judge kicking half a dozen, won by 15 points. Kennedy just about in the rooms. That's either an ankle, a calf, or something like that. Oh, the mark, they grab him, they pile on top, the ball comes out, the judge straightens up, fires at the goals, it'll come around, and Hawthorne are in front by a goal, that's his third. Melbourne's hopes had long since collapsed, but against St Kilda, they were back on the winning list with a 38-point victory. Still the Lions loomed, and with super boot Boney Quinlan in superb touch, were the form team of the competition. He kicked 11 from 12 kicks against North Melbourne to move to 97 for the year, and the Lions were within a breath of the great comeback of the season. Quinlan over the back, Bernie Quinlan fires, and I think it's goal number eight to Bernie Quinlan, it is. Oh, one out again against Glendinning, Quinlan used his body beautifully, picks it up on the left foot, and how many is that, is that 10? Ten goals to Bernie Quinlan. Barry Round returned to the Swans for his first game since being dropped and helped them to a memorable 56-point win over Essendon. Fellow Rover, they're combining well. He's kicked one as well. Can he make it two? A shot at goal from the angle is pretty good. That's a goal. In front of the pack, got his hands but couldn't hold it. Now Round with a snap at goal. Back to Morwood on his own. He's put it through Round. Oh, what a goal. And what a goal for his comeback. Little needs to be said when Jacko is in full flight. This was round 22. He's got to get clear now, he's clear, he's going to have a bounce. He'll straighten up and fire. It goes out and goes out. Oh, really, Jacko, you ripper. Jacko, so he'll go over to Kelvin Moore now. Oh, look, what a salute. Up for the crowd. <laughs> but that was great play on the part of Jackson that time. He fumbled, stumbled. Go too strong for Moore. Out manoeuvred him completely. And that's a strong mark. And Look at Jacko, Jacko, oh, here we go again. He must be driving uh, Calvin Moore mad. Calvin played 301 games. He said, what have I come up against here? And Jacko being a bit modest about this one. <laughs> I think he must have a lot of relations up there with fans. They love him, but don't they? 27 minutes gone, 81 plays 68 now. Well, the Cats in there with a chance now. Bacanara goes down. Card in front, can't take it. Matthews spins out. A shot at goal, is close, and he's dropped it lethal. To Matthews, Flanagan, Kelvin there goes Moore the had the last laugh as he kicked one of the rare goals in his fine career. And the Hawks came home by 69 points to end Geelong's hopes. The unlikely culprit in Footscray's finals downfall was Ronnie Andrews. Rotten Ronnie returned, kicked goals, took marks and shot out hand passes, and the Magpies won by 43 points. Seven at the other end. Banks puts it up. Andrews got it. Back to Andrews. A lovely ball. He has a Andrews. <laughs> the drop punt on its way. Ronnie, you've got goes to 11 17. Steaming in towards full forward. Ronnie. Let's see what he does. One of the favourite sons of Collingwood, even though he's only been here a short time. He's gold, and one could almost say, good night, Footscray. On. Andrews once again, traps it, gives a hand pass wide. Malone's a player. Malone, can he score from here? He hooks it back, it looks a great goal! Oh. Darren Malone, a beautiful goal! And Ronnie Andrews figuring in the last three, using his strength. He'll go long look Bernie at Quinlan Quinlan started the day off perfectly for the Lions, kicking three goals in the first 15 minutes against the Saints, including his 100th for the year. And then it was the celebrations as Fitzroy made fifth spot theirs. Quinlan lopes in, the drop punt. That's goal number 99. All the time in the world, Pert, no pressure on him whatsoever. Looking for Quinlan up over the back. Quinlan takes the mark. What a mark. And will this be goal number 100 to Bernie Quinlan? And now, the kids around the boundary line. Quinlan lines up. Goal number 100 to Bernie Quinlan. His teammates rush in to celebrate. A great moment with him. And second season in a row, he's done that. The second season in a row, 
He's guided Fitzroy into the finals. A testing decision, but a goal for the Tigers as they finished with a win over Melbourne. A six-goal win by Carlton gave it the double chance, but it certainly did entertain the spectators as well. The young player in county to get it downfield, but a free kick, oh gee, a free kick against Pickett. Foot fires in towards Tapper, right in front of goal, uncontested, and he puts it through for goal number six as Ruth Jones is having a wrestle with Dean behind the play. And what a year it was for the High Flyers, despite some very wet and windy Saturday afternoons, some real screamers were taken during season 1984. And of course, not only by the old stages, we had names such as Kappa, Pert, and of course, Paul Salmon takes some great marks. And let's now look at some of the great grabs of season 1984. Picked up by Brewer. Current the fly! goes back there, oh, it's a shocking kick. Oh, there's oh. a beautiful mark to Stephen Ecker. Rip him up. Raw. Looking for Wiedemann. Oh! oh and the side in, oh, coming in from the side, Derek Shaw. Oh. Up towards the centre half, Ford. Oh, there's a great mark to first. Ball. Thorn underneath it. Caught the flies and marks! The half forward. In from behind, no, in the middle of the pack, great mark. Going now with a good kick. Yes, a nice kick. Derek Shaw, oh, magnificent mark by Derek Shaw over the top. Half forward. Banks up. Great mark by Banks. Roberts up towards centre field. Oh, beautiful mark to Kappa. Back towards centre half forward. Demetrio in front. Wilson. And long. Oh. Up by a beautiful mark. Looks like Tussle. What a mark is on the ground so that's a good coaching oh, oh that mark. is a tremendous mark a lovely kick once again from foster oh. is what a great mark kicks it up high william should do the roving instead of being in that pack and over the back a great mark taken by michael reeves what's the full forward position the back is going oh. how about that for a mark what a mark he wins it keeps it in play up towards hunter man oh, was there but hunter's mark. not Points. Collingwood 8 7 55 on seven's big league and over the top. Have an epic. Out wide towards the wing position on the member side, flying high as court. That's a great mark. It's a hurry kick down towards half forward. Oh, great mark. Beautiful mark. Jimmy Cracker. A snap at goal. Won't make the distance. Oh, there's a great mark by Danner. That was a gutsy one. The qualifying final might well have been renamed the knockout final because that's the way it ended up. Bertie Di Pierre Domenico ended Curly Austin's year and put the veteran Tagger in hospital with a broken cheekbone. Dermot Brereton went down and Des English was suspended for two matches. In the end, it was to be the Hawks' comfortable winners by five goals. There it is, two goals to Ralph. Ball is knocked out towards Ralph again. He's already kicked seven. He's going to have a snapshot of the goals. Let's see what he can do with this one. Oh, it's not a bad sort of a kick over. Hawthorne, but they're looking okay as we see Jones drop that mark. It was a difficult one. Deep Pierre Domenico and Dill fight it out. It's Deep Pierre Domenico. Beautiful play on the boundary line as he kicks the ball long. What's this one? Oh, my goodness. Was that a goal? Up there for Matthews to come out. He's in front of Blackwell. He's got to get uh, past two of them. They both fall over. This gives him a chance to score the goal. And he does. Oh, look at the chat. That's goal number six. Off the, ground, gets up to Dave the first Sunday finals match attracted 74,000 to the MCG and they saw a Collingwood team starring youngsters like Mullane and McMullen end Fitzroy's dreams. Oh, but they're coming back to the field a little bit now. Oh, there's a great mark. What a beautiful mark to put. He streaks away from the pack as he fires at the goals. It deserves it and it is a goal. What a beautiful goal. Pass to Richardson. Another long one out wide, picked up beautifully by Mullane. Runs to an open goal, fires. What's the result? That's a goal. It won't. McMullen will get there first. Turns around. Can he make it two? He's already kicked one. That's a great goal. Still in play. McMullen sharks it. Has a snapshot of goal. That's the sealer for mine. Carlton's desperation move in the first semi-final revolved around its shock inclusion of skipper and final star Wayne Johnston. While the Blues leader was well below his best because of a back injury, the Magpies were to suffer a similar fate. A 
sliding mark by skipper Mark Williams saw him dislocate his collarbone in the second quarter. Well tackled. Williams coming up with a short arm or shoulder. Punt down there. The ball hits the deck. Here's a go for the Blues, playing well below their great premiership football of the late 70s and early 80s, had no answer for Collingwood or the genius of Dacos, who kicked 7 4. He balked, gets around Reid now. He straightens up, fires. And there's another one to Collingwood. Convolt can't take the grab, crashes into Banks. Out comes Richardson with the ball. He's kicked four. Good shepherd by Reigns on Perovic. Down to half forward, Collingwood running. Neville Shaw, no one within 10 metres. Chips it up to full forward. Dacos is there, can he make it six? Gets around Reid, shoots, it's coming round. It's there, I think, for mine. Goal, six to Dacos. At the Walsh, now the second semi-final was a dress rehearsal of the 1984 grand final in many people's minds or conversely, a replay of the 1983 Grand Final. ...to find Curran, he doesn't take the mark, Neagle's off, he could score from there, long shot by the Essendon and centre man is a goal. So two goals to Neagle. Neagle go the it was a rugged on. encounter between Hawthorne and Essendon, and again, it was that man Bertie Di Pierre Domenico who held the balance. ...for the goals, and that'll be through, what a beauty by Dippy! He's played a ripper game down there. McCarthy. In the end, Matthews it was to be the Hawks by eight points in one of the best the finals bridge. in years. Lovridge shoots, it's there. Hawthorne are back in front. What a game we've got at the MCG. Superboot himself, Bernie Quinlan, again took the individual honours with another 100-goal season. And let's see some of those great goals right now. Down the ground, looking for Schimmelbush. He should find him. Oh, Shimmer did it well. Certainly has tried. That knee was bandaged during the first quarter. He came back on. Players since half time, but he has trying to do it on his own. That's a great one-man effort. Well done, Wayne Schimmelbush. Matthews couldn't hold the best. Langford already kicking two goals for the third quarter after it now. A left foot snap of the goals. And I think he's put it in for a goal. He has. Derek Shaw flying high, Ricky Barham doing pretty well, streaks away from the pack. He's going to go for a bit of a bounce, the racehorse, right across the centre field, goes for short pass, it's a good one, and he's found Mark Fears in position, a hand pass to Barham again. He should kick a goal, he's gone for the long shot, he's done it! Oh, what the difference now! Hand pass coming over there to run, oh, taken out of his hand by Buckley, magnificent play! A running shot, it deserves the goal, it's going for the goals, it'll make it! Oh, the goal, it's a goal! What a beautiful bit of plan! Goal play on, Hawthorne in trouble, Conlon break out, oh, oh bounce his way through! Pass back to Little House with plenty of trouble. Going through is Walsh and he lines up and fires at the goals. And I think he's put it through for a goal. He has. Disposal once again. Dug to ground by Harris. That's a chance for Reigns and Harris. Harris gets it to Quinlan. Quinlan will give it back to Harris. Harris goes into the open goal. He can run right in. He goes in within five metres and drives towards goal. Magnificent a good goal. goal kicked by Harris. over, tapped out of Gerard Healy, the left foot shot will be from the boundary, no he straightens up, shoots for the right foot, that's another great goal, kicked by Gerard Healy. Taken. Dixon's there for Melbourne, Tuck for Hawthorne, Tuck burst through, great play by Michael Tuck, one bounce and now he puts the ball long up towards McCarthy, he'll shepherd it through, a great goal to Michael Tuck. He's another exciting young player. He's been around for a while, but now starting to show it. Buckley, go James, say the Blues, and go he does. Straight for goal. Hawk, Hawk at left half back. He's well shepherded and can go for a run. On the little McBroom, back to Hawk. They're still going, no tackles forthcoming. On the Hawk again from Wayne Carroll. A long shot of goal by Hawk, and what a goal that was. Taken by Wilson, given to Gotch. 
Got breaks away from the tackle, runs a little bit too far, got the bounce eventually. Shoots toward gold, it's coming back a little bit, but I don't think it got around enough. Yes! Point lead in favour of Geelong. Ablett overruns the ball. Turner kicks it off the ground. Goes after it again. Michael Turner first on the scene. Breaks the tackle. Can he line up? Straightens up, runs past. A goal coming up as Turner puts it through for a magnificent goal by a great captain's effort. Big pack for me up once again. A chance for Woodall. Snaps it back overhead. Look at that for a goal. Pissed it in towards full forward. The waiting down is well set. Great goal. Yours at Yates. Over to Rodney Wright. Oh, intercepting beautifully as Mullane. He can score. Well done, son. Beautiful passage of play. And he's put it through for a goal. But Edmonds equal to the task. Centering the ball towards Bamlett. Can't take the mark. Recovers beautifully. Can he get away? From Blackwell he does. From Reed he does. He fires the ball. Oh, puts it through. Look for Barwick. Barwick gets past Elphingston, gathers the ball in brilliantly. One bounce, two bounces, running into goal. What will he do? Has a good run, lines him up and pops him through. Looking okay as we see Jones drop that mark. It was a difficult one. Deep Pieta Menigo and Dill fight him out. It's Deep Pieta Menigo. Beautiful play on the boundary line as he kicks the ball long. What's this one? Oh Collingwood and Essendon have not played in a grand final since 1911, despite the fact that they'd won 25 premierships between them. The preliminary final of 84 was just as important as a grand final to both sides. Half forward line, another hand pass to Van der Haar, the flying Dutchman fires at the goal, and it's good, it's a goal! Skipper Danaher, almost to mark, here's Baker for goal number two, couldn't miss it from there, and he has him, two goals to Baker, and Nesson to the light in the first turn. Come forward once more, Taylor in front, actually probably could have been spoiled by his own teammate. Baker for goal number three, 30 metres out, bang, there it is, and Baker is a light VFL pass. Essendon running rings around Collingwood at the moment, Van der Haar lobs it at goal, and has put it through, I think. Yes, he has. Kick a chance here now for McMullen to Markey. Oh, he dropped an easy one. Oh, what a chance. It was the chance of a oh. lifetime. They all missed that one coming into meet it as well. Baker once again snaps at goal, it's going pretty close. And I think it'll be another goal to Baker, that's goal number four. Shaw on the left, neither gets an effective tap out. Bradbury, a oh, beautiful smother, pinched by Richardson, he's gone for a pass, down towards Ronnie Andrews, mark number three, Andrews plays on, oh what pace, Andrews shoots at goal, can he make it three? Oh, Ronnie's done it! What a great one-handed effort, a pause from Lou Richards, and probably deserved. Duckworth and Andrew's having a great conversation. I was just thinking that, Pete, I was about to say exactly the same thing. I think it's, they're acting like it's a Sunday afternoon picnic. The mark, about 25 metres out from goal. What a pretty acute angle, there's a bit of a box on down there between Richardson and Clark. Now Andrews, Andrews and the Duckworth are having a go. Well, they're two old sparring partners, they're mates, and uh, they were mates. The ball goes across the centre half for that band Oh, golly, did he jump that time. Phillips fumbled the ball. Towards Danaher's got the sit. McEwen goes down. Has the goal coming up. Another goal to Danaher. That's his third. And then, of course, we come to that one day of the year when everything stops for the VFL Grand Final. This year, it's on Saturday, September 29. Pass from Lester Smith to Matthews, who steady shoots at goal. First blood to Hawthorne, and that took only about 30 seconds. There's a chance for another one, Duckworth and Matthews. Both fight a good. Matthews goes down. He was nearly grabbed by the leg. And Lovridge puts it through for another one. Oh, they're looking good, Hawthorne. The fight's more interesting the than fight's the fight's still going. Hazard couldn't pick it up. Picked up now by Danaher. The kick doesn't travel any distance. 
Little uh, Izzard's got the mark, but the umpire called play on a hand pass. Coming back now to Clark, a shot at goal, and a mark in front of goal there by Baker. Kick on its way. There it is. And that's a goal. Duckworth in front. Oh, great mark to Byrne. Too tall for Duckworth. One quite make the distance. The pack. Oh, there's a great mark to Brereton. Michael Tuck from 50 metres out. Shoots at goal. He's kicked 1-1 one, one so far. Judge gets the ball back to Wallace. Backing up well. Back to Judge again. This looks like a goal to me if I've ever seen one. There it is. Oh, there's a great battle. Matthews with a snap at goal. This is close. It'll be a goal. Oh, there's a, a mark to Van Hart. Watson spins out of the pack beautifully. Gets away from Russo. The kicker not a good one. Finally picked up here now with a long hand pass from Dano. Over to Little Lazard. He gets the ball back to Williams. This could be dangerous. It could be a goal. And the Little Rover runs into the goal now. A hand pass coming over to Duckworth. And he scores a goal. So that move paid off straight away. There's a pass coming out there, it'll be okay. Baker's got that one. Danaher from centre half forward goes for his second goal, but he's off target. Merritt comes in, the big fella's got it. Williams puts Essendon into attack, he's looking for Baker. Is great mark. Bad pass, picked out by Ezard. Ezard up towards full forward. Oh, Merritt's got his name on it. Clark and Matthews. Matthews spins out beautifully. Left foot snapshot is pretty close, he's got it! What a goal! Danaher does the ruck work, does it beautifully. Gets it to Harvey too. Great mark. Duckworth comes in, got a touch of the fumble, but he gets it on the second go. Finally drives it up there towards the full forward position, and Baker's got it. Wallace's kick is not a good one. It, it goes straight on the hands this time of Hawke, and he goes off like a racehorse. Short pass, it'll be OK. Oh, he nearly lost it, Van der Haar. But he's got it, doesn't waste any time. He quickly plays on. There's two of them down there. It'll be a mark and a free kick to Duckworth. There's the kick by Duckworth, going for goal number two, and he's done it. So the Bombers are coming back now. On the judge, he's been fairly quiet today. Judge at centre field. Hot in pursuit is Duckworth. That man's everywhere. He gets his kick in though, judge, up towards full forward. Brereton is marked! They want a goal quickly. In front is O'Halloran. This is their goal. Baker puts it through. That's what they wanted. And we've got a game on our hands. Neagle, centre wing. Essendon have decided, OK, we go for broke. And that's just what they're doing. Up towards full forward again. Oh, Bradbury, here's the goal! It's only a few points in it! Whoa, those two goals came up in two minutes! In goes E, Lovridge is caught by Hurd. Oh, beautifully done, Essendon. Here's Watson at half forward, he'll go for a run. No, it's a pass, it's a gem, it's Duckworth! <laughs> Billy Duckworth. He's played on. Thompson, Hawthorne in complete disarray at the moment. And if this little fella needs to kick a goal, this is the one to kick. Comes in, straightens the one. And there it is, a goal, five points difference. Oh, what a grand final. Can the Bombers go on with it? Byrne tries to come into the pack. It's Williams sending the Bombers back into attack. Up it goes there, Baker taps the ball on. Oh, beautiful play. Goes for a goal. And I think they've hit the front. Yes, they've hit front, a point in front. That's four goals to Baker. Four goals in eight minutes. Curran gets into position, punched away by Danaher playing at centre-half back. Oh, Walsh got one from uh, DP and a minute ago. Caught him right on the point of the chin. The umpire going across to take his number. Oh, he's aimed him out like a tack. Houston. Vanderhaar, yes, the mark. He'll be within kicking distance. He's on a pretty fair angle and the umpire bringing him further around. But he should get the distance without any trouble at all. Van der Haar. Kick is an awkward looking one. Van Mark or a Hawthorne mark. Merritt. Merritt's got it. And Essendon lead by five points. Merritt got it to the back of McCarthy. Recovers well, goes for hand pass to the blonde headed Harvey. A kick up there towards the full forward position. Van der Haar knocked on. There's a go now for Weston. He's put it through for a goal. What a match winner this guy's been. It's set a half forward. 11 points the difference. And the Hawks come back. Bit of fumbling goes on as the ball is finally driven up towards their centre half forward line. Tapped on by Merritt. They're full of running. There's Weston again with a hand pass. Coming over to Watson. This could be another goal. It is. Oh, they're killing him. And Essendon look like winning their first premiership since 1965. 92. Donnell. 
puts it onto Merritt or trying to find Merritt, but Watson's there instead. They're running right away. There's another one if he's accurate. I think he's dobbed it. It's Essendon's flag. No doubt about it. Duckworth to Nelvin Hawke with them biting OK. Hawker from the point of the square has gone for a pass and that's beautifully delivered. Right down the throat of Merv Neagle. Eat in pursuit. Neagle gets his kick in long oh, and high to the goal this. square and look at that. That really is the sealer if ever there needed to be one. Into this quarter by just on 35 minutes. There's the siren. Australian football video presents a laugh from us at football's favourite characters with Lou's Larrikins, an all-star cast of storytellers. Well, they're sitting on a gas meter drinking flat beer out of a marmite jar. <laughs> Looks crackers, doesn't they? <laughs> Why else do you think anyone would make an idiot of themselves wearing white boots? And just as they got past me, I went, quack, 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 quack. <laughs> Lou's Larrikins, a sportsman's night out at home on video. Is that one all right?